Good afternoon. So, good morning. One of those two. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about something a little more serious, and we're going to do the calculation for lab number nine. So we're going to calculate which is heavier gas. Gas has mass to it. So we're going to predict the weight of some carbon dioxide sample, which we're going to capture, and we're going to predict the weight or the mass of nitrogen which we're going to capture. We're going to predict that carbon dioxide will be heavier, have more mass than nitrogen. So carbon dioxide is going to be heavier and it's going to sink down. Nitrogen is going to be lighter, it's going to float up. And we're going to predict that because we have a sample of nitrogen which we produced and a sample of carbon dioxide which you produced, we're going to repeat this and follow along. What we're going to do is we're going to predict that carbon dioxide is going to weigh more, if that's a proper phrase, actually have more bigger mass, than nitrogen. Getting somewhat sophisticated for seventh grade. But here we go. Ready, Dave? Yep. I'm going to do the lab. Dave's going to photograph it. Let's go. So I got to that. Okay, so what I'm doing is I don't want the balloon to be too fresh. I want it to be flexible. So I'm blowing it up and I'm bouncing around it. I don't want to ruin the balloon but I want to make it easier to expand. Okay, now this is the hard part. I'm going to produce carbon dioxide from something you've been doing all year. We're going to mix baking soda or sodium bicarbonate with vinegar, acetic acid, and we're going to then capture the carbon dioxide as it comes off. To do that, I am going to take some, car some uh, sodium bicarbonate and put it inside the balloon, which is a trick into itself. I don't know if you can do this at home, you can try it, but you need a scale to do this at home. So that's a pretty good size of it. Okay, so I'm going to force all the air out of it and I'm going to set it right here inside. Then I'm going to take some acetic acid, pour it in my graduated cylinder. And really, I think about that's enough. How about 20 milliliters? Now, I don't want, I've got to get some gas. I can't do much about all that right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the balloon and I'm going to stretch it up over the top of the graduated cylinder. So when the gas comes out, I'll be able to capture it. I'm going to have to hold this really tight because it's going to re react. And it's going to react. As it reacts, it blows up the balloon. And I've got to hold it tight. Oh, it's cold. That's an endothermic reaction because it feels cold. That feels really cold. Okay, so I don't think it's going to inflate much more, is it? So now the trick is to capture all that carbon dioxide gas without losing any of it. And I think I was successful. So this is probably all carbon dioxide gas. And I marked it ahead of time, CO2. As I captured the escape. Now I'm going to take the other balloon and when you breathe air in and out, really most of the air in the atmosphere, 80 percent of it, is not oxygen or carbon dioxide. It's really nitrogen. So I'm going to take this air pump, I think, I'm going to pump it full of nitrogen because really the air you breathe is about 80 percent nitrogen. That's about right, isn't it? Is that right? Same yep. size. And I'm going to tie it off. So this balloon is full of 80% nitrogen. And this balloon is full of carbon dioxide. Relatively the same. Same balloon, relatively the same size. For seventh grade, this is pretty good stuff. So now I'm going to go back to my calculations. My calculations using a periodic table, which you have, 
is carbon weighs 12 atomic mass units. Oxygen weighs 16 carbon atomic mass units. And you notice I've got two atoms of oxygen, one atom of carbon. The total atomic mass unit of the stuff in the carbon dioxide balloon is 44 atomic mass units. Or 44 grams if I had this huge quantity called a mole. We'll get into that later, hopefully before we do this lab. But a mole is a quantity like a dozen eggs. Like, like a pound of sugar. And so a mole is a large, large number of molecules. So if I have a mole of carbon dioxide molecules, it should weigh 44 grams. Or the mass would be 44 grams. On the other hand, if I take nitrogen, N2, nitrogen always hangs out with itself. So nitrogen, nitrogen 2, will have 14 atomic mass units plus another 14 atomic mass, or 28 atomic mass units, or 28 grams if I had a mole of it. A mole <clears throat> is a huge quantity, and we'll get into that later. It's like all the sand, pebbles, and, and, and the ocean would equal a mole. It's a really, really big number we use in chemistry. But if you'll notice that this size of nitrogen should weigh 28, this size of carbon dioxide should weigh 44. Now let's get our little handy dandy scale here, turn it on, and let's see if it's true. This carbon dioxide should weigh noticeably more than this side orange, this side of, of, uh, of nitrogen. Two types of gas, two types of gas, both of them odorless, clear, but they weigh entirely different amounts. So I'm going to put the carbon dioxide on the scale and it weighs 5 grams. If my calculations are right, this should weigh less than 5 grams. You ready for this? Drum roll. And I put the nitrogen on. If it stays there, it's static. And it weighs 2 grams. So this weighs, according to my little balloon test here, I have 2 grams here. I have 2 grams in this balloon. And I, what was the other one? Nine. And the carbon dioxide weighs, I thought it was five. Five. Five grams. So my little balloon of carbon dioxide weighs five grams with the balloon. Same balloon, different colors. And the nitrogen weighs two grams. This supports our relationship here. So 4 is to 5 as 28 is to 2. For a 7th grade class, that's pretty doggone cool. That's pretty doggone accurate. So it tells us that carbon dioxide weighs about twice as much as nitrogen gas. With this lab, I don't know if you can, unless you have a scale at home, I don't know how you can do it at home. You can try it, or you can just feel the difference in it, because this does feel heavier than this, by the way. Okay? So you should be a sense of how the chemical formula can tell us the mass. How the chemical formula can tell us the mass. And how we can prove that to be true in a laboratory. That's pretty cool. All right? So, that's good. That's a wrap, and that's lab number nine.